fears about Justin Bieber. In a recent interview with Storm Monroe, Jaguar spilled all the tea about how Diddy didn't stop at using Justin for his own pleasure. He allegedly also passed him off to his friends and allowed them to have their way with the poor young Justin. Justin Bieber has also been trending these last few weeks after the raid on Diddy's homes, and many disturbing videos of him have been circulating on the internet. It has led to new conversations surrounding Diddy's weird relationship with Justin. What's worse is that, according to Jaguar, Diddy has done the same thing to many other up-and-coming male artists in the industry, including Meek Mill. Now, Meek Mill went into a frenzy on Twitter a couple of weeks ago, trying to prove he wasn't Diddy's boy toy, but it seems like the rumors were true after all. So, did Diddy really pass Justin around in the industry, and just how many other young men did he do the same thing to? Hey, young brother, it is good. Selling out arenas and everything. Starting to act different, huh? You ain't even calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I'm gonna give so, Justin Bieber started trending sometime last year after Cassie's lawsuit dropped because the lawsuit opened the floodgates for many shady things about Diddy to begin coming to light. At the time, it kind of seemed like people were exaggerating just how messed up things must have been for Justin when he was around Diddy. But with everything that's come out now, girl, you gotta admit that there must have been something very creepy going on there. And Jaguar Wright had a lot to say about it in her recent interview with Strom Monroe. In the interview, Jaguar made reference to that disturbing footage of Justin Bieber hanging out with Odell Beckham and Trey songs where it looks like Justin is going down on Odell. Now, some fans have tried to play this off as Justin doing some of that Coca-Cola, which, you know, is terrible in itself because these are grown men encouraging a young brother into a drug-fueled lifestyle. But according to Jaguar, that wasn't no Coca-Cola at all. It was Justin doing to Odell exactly what we thought he was doing all along. And you just have to look at Justin's wet mouth at the end of the video to confirm it. And it looks like Justin may not have been doing it willingly because, according to Jaguar, Trey Songs was there as a lookout so nobody would catch on to what Odell was doing to Justin and probably to avoid paparazzi getting a recording of the act. And then I think about that really disturbing footage of Bieber, Odell Beckham, and Trey Songs. Yes. Like, and, and Trey's like literally sitting there playing a lookout. Playing lookout as Justin Bieber goes down on Odell. The boy came up with his mouth wet. Mouth wet. What? Dribbling. Now, what they're going to try to say is, no, nah, Justin Bieber was just doing a line of coke. No, he didn't mess with his nose and he, he came up. He doing a line of coke with his mouth. He wiped his mouth. When you do his coke, mouth was wet. You do this when you finish your line. His you mouth, mouth was you wet. Talk. The post nasal drip that was criminal fluid. It's just a sick, sick situation. Jaguar then went on to talk about how Justin must have started going down this path from the moment he spent those 48 hours with Diddy. Now, that footage of Diddy promising to give Justin Bieber a Lamborghini and a house has caused a lot of controversy because it was taken during their supposed 48-hour staycation. But with everything that's come out about Diddy since then, girl, I can't even watch that video without shuddering at the thought of what Justin must have gone through in the name of Diddy's mentorship. And did y'all know Diddy actually gave Justin that Lamborghini? Yep, he did. Not two minutes after he got his driver's license, Justin was spotted cruising around town with a Lambo resembling the one Diddy promised him in that footage. So if Diddy didn't give it to him, well, that's one mighty coincidence. But what y'all need to ask yourselves is, why would Diddy give a random kid a car like that unprovoked? Well, a lot of people speculated that Diddy was just doing what any good sugar daddy would do, giving his boy toy expensive toys in exchange for getting that sugar. Now, 
we've seen all the horrible things Diddy allegedly did to Cassie from her lawsuit. We've also seen all the things Lil Rod claimed he did. So if word on the street is anything to go by, then it must have been 10 times worse for Justin because he was so young when it all started. I mean, just take a look at how bright and innocent Justin looked in that video. Now, put that side by side with how Justin looked less than a decade later. Yeah, they messed him up real good. But what's crazy is how people are only just clocking this tea now when the signs were there all along. I mean, look at how scared Justin was while talking to Diddy in this footage. My guy is literally fumbling his words because Diddy put him on the spot. Now, allegedly, the backstory of that footage is that Justin's team had deliberately kept him away from Diddy for a while because they believed Diddy was doing too much and causing Justin's mental and physical health to derail. That explains why things were so awkward between them when Diddy finally hunted him down, ready to pick up their shenanigans where they left off. Then there's this footage of Diddy appearing to pat Justin down to see if Justin was wearing any wires, and I don't know what Diddy whispered in his ear, but Justin ended the meeting with love you. Another clue people missed is how Justin started getting into alcohol and substances after he started associating with Diddy. During Diddy's 2014 Cyrock party, Justin Bieber was spotted holding a bottle that looked like aqua hydrate, which is supposed to contain a clear liquid. But if you look closely at Justin's hand, the bottle he's holding contains a suspicious yellow liquid that could have been alcohol or really anything else. Years later, Justin talked about how that moment of his life was tough because he was hurting, unhappy, confused, angry, misled, misunderstood, and angry at God. So that tells you he was really going through it even though it looked like he was having the time of his life at the peak of his career. Of course, y'all know Diddy was not the only cause of Justin Bieber's problems. He entered the industry very young and didn't have much guidance. So despite being young, he has been manipulated and objectified in every way you can think of. Mind you, it was adults doing this. From his fellow artists to interviewers and hosts, everyone wanted to get a chunk of Sweet JB, whether he was willing to give it up or not. Take Ellen DeGeneres, for example. She literally displayed this incredibly exposing paparazzi shot of Justin on her show and then asked him some weird questions about it. It's on the low. Yeah. And you, because usually we're all pretty good at spotting paparazzi. Yeah. They, they hide in boats yeah. and pretend to be fishermen, yeah. and, and we're like, yeah. you're paparazzi. I mean, we, we're yeah. pretty good at it. How did you not see that there was paparazzi there? Well, I just didn't see them. I think I wasn't really looking out for them either, so. Was there a boat? After, when you think back on it now, can you see where they may have been? Um, yeah, yeah, they're definitely in a boat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when, how quickly after that was shot did you realize that that happened? Did that go on wire right away? Uh, yeah, it was pretty much like a couple days. It was like a couple days later, screwing him. He was like, yo, I hate to tell you this, but... In 2011, when Justin was 16, James Corden interviewed him for the 2011 Brit Awards, and he's just being a total weirdo around him. Can I say this? Lean into me again. You smell amazing. How old are you? Uh, thank you. How old are you? I'm 16. I'll be 17 in, like, two weeks. I don't ever remember smelling that good at 16. Like, I was... That was bad. Yeah. Wow. Look at your eyes. Um, uh, what music are you listening to at the moment, Justin? Barely a year later, Justin was at the 2012 AMAs with Jenny McCarthy. And just look at what she was doing. Mind you, Justin was barely 18 here, and Jenny was 40 years old, and he basically had to pry her off himself. He was so uncomfortable that when he started to give his acceptance speech, he first said, Wow, I feel so violated right now. In another clip, an interviewer was asking 15-year-old Justin about the talk, and he even had to call them out on it, because why are you asking a 15-year-old stranger that type of question? Okay, so what are you giving? I, I, really, I feel uncomfortable right now. Oh, why do you want to know from a 15-year-old boy? That's pretty weird. And here's Katy Perry just straight up feeling Justin up. Perry, who apparently wanted to know what a Bieber butt felt like. Child, Justin Bieber has definitely been through a lot in the industry. And the fact that he even had the strength to pull through the dark times is nothing short of a miracle. It's crazy that while all this was happening, the people who should have been there to protect to him, a.k.a. Usher and Diddy, were doing the exact opposite. Imagine that. Okay, for context, Usher strolled into Justin's life almost as soon as Justin arrived in Atlanta with Scooter Braun. He was just 
13 at the time. According to Justin's mother, Patty Mallet, she prayed really hard for Justin to encounter good people in the industry who would treat her son right. When Usher and Scooter Braun came around, she thought they would be the answers to her prayer, but she couldn't have known at the time that they would be the opposite. Usher took Justin under his wing as a mentor, even appointing his friend Ryan Good to act as Justin's swagger coach and road manager. According to Patty, that's when she started losing control of her son. Justin was just a young boy coming from a humble background, and all of a sudden, he was one of the most famous people in the world, and he had made more money than anyone in his family had ever touched. Patty said Justin needed someone to ground him amid all that, but unfortunately, she couldn't do it because she didn't have access to him when he went on tours. As much as we like to blame the parents of some child stars for exposing their children to Holly Weird sometimes, they're actually no match for the vultures and the wolves in the industry. Fast forward a few years, and Usher had already introduced Justin to Diddy, and that would be the beginning of Justin's decline into the deep dark. If word on the street is anything to go... How do you take 20,000 children in the middle of New York City without anybody seeing? Justin's decline into the deep dark. If word on the street is anything to go by, then Diddy didn't waste any time in making Justin his boy toy under the guise of mentorship, just like he did with Usher. We all heard Diddy say he got legal guardianship of Usher when he was producing his first album. And what did he do in his duty as a so-called legal guardian? Well, he exposed Usher to the adult lifestyle. Usher talked about his experience living with Diddy for the Puffy Flavor Camp. I moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending you over to something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some... Camp? Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In pre- the 90s, do you understand? According to Gene Deal, Usher's relationship was much worse than we can ever know. He even suggested that Usher might have gone through the same things Cassie went through with Diddy and that it got so bad once that Usher landed in the hospital. Gene Deal also talked about how Diddy had an escort that he recruited Usher and Justin too. Girl, the things he described were so disturbing. Just check this out. Puff and Usher did have a situation. And that situation led Usher to the hospital. Now, I let Usher explain that to y'all. I let Usher tell that story. But how dare you say a man that groomed you, you gonna give him a pass. Bro, you know I know. Let me, re- let, let me reframe you on something. Remember, Usher? We was at the Swiss Hotel. Puff was had Kim in the room. Had one of Keith Sweat's baby mothers in the in in the uh the big room outside the master bedroom. He came outside in his robe. He came outside in his robe. She gave him a right there. His back was turned to me. She gave him a you knocked on the door. I came and opened the door for you. Puff went in the room. You came in the room and kissed that girl dead in the mouth. Now I'm telling that because you taking up for somebody that. Girl, these are nasty motherfuckers for you, Pamela. Hey, everybody. I was in the kitchen fixing his food. Had to fix his bananas. Um bananas baby food and his pancake sasha and egg but he ain't gonna eat that egg when he tear that sasha pancake up anyways i'm gonna tell y'all about the gifts i got today i'm not gonna open nothing until may 19th i'm gonna let them stack all the way up girl we got a lot of gifts i got three or four in there on the table some more coming tomorrow some more coming on the 17th girl y'all been shopping good thank you Let's finish listening to these girl. These some girl. These some nasty motherfuckers for you. Kiss them right in the mouth. These some nasty motherfuckers. Ugh, gross. That you know, and a lot of more people know, didn't do you right. I love the fuck out of Gene Deal. That old motherfucker right there. I know he probably going on sixty. He ain't scared to say shit or tell shit. Gene Deal, I love me some Gene Deal. Hey, Miss uh, Irina Harris. Thank you for your gifts, beautiful sweetheart. Love you, girl. Girl, I cannot wait to open this stuff. It's like, it's so excited.
I don't know why I was thinking when the gifts come, girl, they ain't going to be in our package. You know how you just be so excited, you just thinking they're just going to come and knock on your door and hand it to you, girl, in a bag and not wrapped up. Girl, I got the stuff in there on the table. It's so cute. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to open it until the 19th. I know it's on the baby registry, but I'm still not going to open everything until the 19th so I can have a really good time with y'all. I'm just so excited. I don't know. I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy, y'all. I'm just so happy. I feel like Miss Carla now. She said, <laughs> Gene Deal, <laughs> pray for him, Pam. Girl, he's telling everything, girl. And why they, girl, why they saying that they think Puff going to pay the feds off, girl? Y'all think he going to be able to do that? I don't think so. Because Nancy Grace been doing a lot of talking, girl. And they said when Nancy Grace be covering some, somebody is going to jail, girl. So I'm trying to see what's going to happen. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen. And some new stuff came out today. So that's why I'm saying y'all heard this. But I'm so happy, y'all. So I just don't know. This is going to be... I'm going to be with y'all the whole time. This is going to be so... This is going to be so good. Y'all just going to be to the hospital when it's time to go. Okay. Gene also pointed out how Usher was probably having a trauma bond with Diddy because of the things Diddy did to him because Usher had been covering for Diddy. And when you think about it, he's kind of right. Every time Usher has talked about Diddy, he sounds like he's selecting his words carefully, like he doesn't want to accidentally spill something that might get people talking. Let's bring back that Howard Stern interview for a minute. Usher has never actually spoken on the rumors that he was Diddy's boy. Usher and his wife had on all black yesterday. Girl, he is so gay with his outfit on. I don't know where that was coming from. I seen it today when I was scrolling through YouTube streets. Him and his wife popped up. She had an all black. Her outfit was off the chain. But the way he had his pants, like some bell bottom pants he had on, pulled up to above his neighbor, showing his um chest. It was like giving nothing but gay vibes. Y'all gotta see it. I wish I could find it, but it was giving nothing but gay vibes. But court documents from the Lil Rod lawsuit claim he was. In the lawsuit, it said that Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in intercourse with rapper, R&B singer, and Stevie J. The redacted rapper and R&B singer were described in the footnotes as a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj and performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency, respectively. It didn't take long for fans to put two and two together and figure out that Meek Mill was the rapper and Usher was the... Hi, Mama Wooden. They said uh, Justin Bieber wife want finna leave him because she's so embarrassed by all these allegations, girl. I don't think she's gonna leave him though because of the money, but they're just worried on the street. R&B singer. But apart from the fact that Usher has talked about how wild his experience at Puffy Flavor Camp was, he himself once slipped up and mentioned how he and Usher used to sleep in the same bed when Usher was still a child. Thank you for sure. Yeah, he wants to see his kids, Pamela, when they asked him, um, will he send his kids to um P D the house to a party or something? He said, Hell no, no. Okay, we know why. <laughs> I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's not, I mean, I mean, back in the day when he was like 10, I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted plates, you know what I'm saying, so four was admitted. He tried to play it off as them fighting over frosted flakes, and Kevin Hart tried to deflect from it, but we heard what we heard. So it's weird that Usher tries to cover for Diddy, but it's kind of understandable if you know how traumatizing events play on people's psyche. And it looks like Usher is not the only male artist who Diddy has that effect on, because Meek Mill has also been online acting like the fool because he was accused of being Diddy's boy toy. As y'all know, Meek Mill was named in the Lil Rod lawsuit as the rapper who Diddy has allegedly had intercourse with. With. Jaguar Wright talked about Diddy in her recent interview with Storm Monroe, hinting she's sure he's given that behind up many times for the diddler. She even called Meek a power bottom. Is it, is it power bottom? I knew Meek was power bottom. Wow. Well, he already done got the broke in. Yeah, I'm in 106 in Park, right? Every day I would watch 106 in Park at 6 p.m. with Free and AJ or whatever that man was with the brass. She smelled no wits. Lil' Kim and them used to come out on the stage. P did all these ushers, rappers used to come out on the stage. This stuff been going on for so many years, y'all, and we was looking up to all of them. 
I ain't gonna say really look up to them like most of childhood kids wanted to be a celebrity, right? And want to do music. But look what they had they had to go through to do all that. And it's all coming out now. Girl, I'm waiting on them to get Jay Z and drag him for feel him and Beyonce because they don't need some real evil ass shit. It don't matter about her separating her assets and divorcing him and all this stuff. She have did some evil ass shit too, baby. And it's gonna come out. That's why I'm not siding with neither one of them. I'm not siding with neither one of them because she have done some real evil stuff to other women in the industry. And it's 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 stupid and crazy because it's enough money out here for everybody. Why Taylor Swift ain't going through it? Why Miley Cyrus ain't going through it? She probably did a few little drugs, Miley Cyrus, but why she didn't have to get um her vagina taken or to get up there to the top? Why Justin Bieber and uh Justin Timberlake? I don't know about Justin Timberlake. I just know he missed it with the uh, Janet Jackson putting up today. I don't know if it was an accident or on purpose, but there was a rumor. But why Taylor Swift, she from Nashville, Tennessee, why they didn't have to go through all this? Justin Bieber went through it because Usher signed him, and it's Usher's fault the reason why Justin Bieber got sexual assaulted from D to them because um, Justin Bieber mama let him go with Usher motherfucking ass. Usher sends him to Diddy House for 48 hours. 15 years old now. Just, just picture all of them. Little Kim, Foxy Brown, all the stuff they had to go through, Aaliyah. And then the uh, Jaguar Wright said that they drugged Aaliyah and they toted her and put her on the plane. I heard this yesterday. They picked her up and put her on the plane. She didn't even walk on the plane. Girl, there's some evil motherfuckers out here for you. It's some evil motherfuckers out here for you. Yes, uh, Pineapple Lavender. I used to watch 106 Park every day, faithfully watch it. If you touch my TV while, while 106 Park was on, baby, it was going to be, it was going to go down because there was the show. There was the show at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock or whatever, Central Standard Time in our house. That was the show. But let me finish playing this. This got, um... Uh, fifty six seventeen. Four more minutes left on it. I just didn't know that that's why he was faking it with Nikki, so that he would have an excuse to be up underneath the devil. But this is not the first time Jaguar has talked about Meek Mill being passed around in the industry. In an interview with Real Life Productions, she said Meek Mill might have been used by the Smiths when he went to them for mentorship. <laughs> Well, they do weird things in their house, and young men have left their house screaming to get away from them in their mentorship. Meek Mill. Bashir Gray. Left that house screaming. August the only one in state, and I guess he was really sick. He needed a doll. Is anyone surprised that Will and Jada are close friends with Diddy? I mean, if Meek Mill was Diddy's side piece, he definitely could have borrowed him to the Smiths if they wanted some fresh cheeks to spread. There's also the fact that since the lawsuit started dropping on Diddy, old photos and videos of Meek Mill have resurfaced, and fans have a lot of questions. For example, there's this picture of Meek Mill and Diddy wearing matching PJs like they had a sleepover or something. Then there's this viral footage of Diddy calling Meek Mill daddy. Like two grown men calling each other, daddy is not weird at all. Even more interesting is this footage of there are many more bodies like this in different bodies throughout the world. Europe and Africa. Their daddy is not weird. Oh, Pamela and Saucy Santana, he a nasty motherfucker too. And young my but she she real nasty bitch because she knew Saucy Santana and Diddy had fuck. And she still was fucking Diddy. Diddy. I don't give a fuck about her. They saying she was a sex trafficking person. Good. We knew she was a hoe. We knew she was doing it. But still, you fuck Diddy still. You know she ain't use our protection because she just nasty. She just hoish. Anytime she sit on her on Carisha please and say she wanna fuck Megan, she don't fuck Megan the stallion. She just bisexual. Just put it like that. Like she said, she bisexual. She'll do both. But Saucy said, tell her, fuck Diddy. And then allegedly he was giving out herpes. Girl, these motherfuckers are nasty. Girl, these are nasty motherfuckers. So I can't stand them nasty people. 
It's like you only want to listen to none of their music no more because they just so fucking nasty and filthy. Girl, I don't like, I, I hate her. Anything, come on the radio now. That's why I don't listen to the radio. Their daddy is not weird at all. Even more interesting is this footage of Meek Mill singing in a club. And check out how fast Diddy whips his head around when Meek Mill says some lines. <laughs> Diddy was up there looking like he was having flashbacks or something. Now, Meek Mill has tried very hard to prove he likes women and he's not gay. I mean, he spent seven days and seven nights on Twitter trying to convince everyone of how much he loved women. In one tweet, he said, When I got a girl around me, I'm effing her twice a day, lol. Asshole, some of your favorites. P don't control me, but it's like a high. One love to the gay people, but that juicy P do it for me. I done ran red lights to get that feeling. Y'all weird on here like devil, lol. Then he added, y'all see rappers with gay styles, they want that look, leave that to them. I come from that gangsta bitch surviving in the jungle. He even blamed the media for trying to bring him down and stop his new release from trending. The two things... Snitching or we gay? We generating hundreds of millions from music as niches. They are powering this stuff even if it's fake. The goal is to disrupt the hip-hop community. I own this music that tomorrow. Play it. But you the one thing he didn't deny. Being Diddy's boy toy. Anyway, sources are not saying Justin might have had the trauma bond with Diddy because even after everything, he still publicly talks about how he loves Diddy. Justin even still had time to work with Diddy even after Diddy despite the fact that he had practically retired from the music scene. Didn't he sell his entire music catalog for $200 million last Last year, but somehow he ended up working on Diddy's love album on a track called Moments. In his post announcing the collaboration, Justin said, I remember going to my brother Diddy's office to pitch him a song I wrote for him when I was like 14. Sadly, the song was trash and it would be a hard no from him. Fast forward to a few years ago, Puff asked if I would freestyle something for his upcoming love album. Wild full circle moment. Love you, Diddy. Girl, is that weird or what? You want to know what's even creepier? A video has started circulating online showing Justin at a party party with Diddy and the game giving him drinks. It's unclear what the drinks were exactly, but there have been speculations that it might have been spiked, especially because Justin was allegedly passed around by Diddy and his friends at that party. Child, I can't even begin to imagine what must have been going through his head at that party. Usher, just Good, I gave him a drink and he started staggling, girl. So stupid. Just to be with dumb him. Justin also hasn't said anything about his time with Diddy, but he has done a documentary about what life was like for him all those years, and watching it just breaks your heart. However, a source close to Justin says he's willing to confront his relationship with Diddy if it will help the current investigation. Justin doesn't really want to talk publicly about his relationship with Diddy, but he may have to. I'm not sure if Diddy did anything that Justin now thinks crossed the line, but if he does, he's not saying. If Justin has to address his past interactions with Diddy, he will. Jaguar Wright has been talking about how creepy Diddy is for years, but it seems like everyone is now ready to leave her. Fans have left their comments about this whole thing online, and one of them said, I'm concerned for Justin B. I hope that he can get through this. He was clearly a victim. He does not appear to be as strong as Cassie. Another person said, Justin and all the victims need to call out Diddy. Justin, we stand behind you. No judgment. You are a victim. Be strong and stand up against Diddy and lead the others to come forward. But now I want to know what y'all think about Jaguar Wright filling the tea about Diddy and Justin I hope this will be the sell on that motherfucker. That's what I hope.
live and videotape. Real secret recordings sing Diddy, a.k.a. Sean Puffy Combs. This Diddy spent the last 72 hours trying really hard to look nonchalant. I tell you this, as a bunch of fans that pulled out my front yard in armored trucks and wearing Kevlar, I'd be worried. Thank you. You say it's nasty. that the twins too young so the house is in the oldest daughter nine now what's her name it's on the tip of my tongue but i can't recall right now i gotta go back and watch the video the oldest daughter is over 18 so the house is in her name and they also stated that anything that was done illegal can still be seized even if it's in the daughter's name. No matter who he's signing shit over to, he got some stuff in Justin's name and he got some stuff in the other son's name, the dark, the dark one. The one that be spiking drinks like him with his black ass. Yeah. He got things in their names and on the messy sweet spot, baby, it's a woman in the industry that know about all of them motherfuckers, and she used to deal with them. She goes on there almost every night. I can't think of her name, but she be on her mouth in the messy sweet spot. Baby, she stated that anything he passed over to those kids gonna be seized. It don't matter what he moving. So, he better be moving that money, giving it to somebody that he don't motherfucking know, goddamn it. Because passing it down to your motherfucking kids, to your kids, and it's still gonna be taken, girl. These motherfuckers should have had stuff like um what they keep at those banks. Um, whenever you don't keep your money in the bank, it's like a little deposit box up in the bank. And then some people put their money in storage units and have their money in storage units. These motherfuckers don't think, girl. That's just stupid. They just ignorant. They don't even fucking think. It's just run around here passing the money down to the family members. Real motherfuckers, smart people that know how to move in silence, put their money in storage. I know the feds can check storage units to see if it's in your name. You don't put the storage unit in your name. You put it in somebody else's name. This is some dumb motherfuckers for you. You speaking with a you speaking with somebody that used to do crazy ass shit. Mike in South Beach comes was all smiles, appearing unbothered by the continuing investigation into allegations of sex trafficking and sex assault. 
as Sean Buffy Combs gets warnings from behind that his life is in danger, he goes for a bike ride. Yeah, the woman on the he had an older an older daughter girl. They said um he had some twins, and then um the woman had called um the woman that know them that run with used to run with them in the industry said it is his older uh, older daughter that he got he got one more daughter that's old old older than those twins. You have to go listen to it on the Mason Sweet Spot. She didn't say the son. She didn't say the two, the two sons. She said the two. Their names too, but they said the house is in his business daughter name, so he must got a child out on these YouTube streets that he had first way before those twins with somebody. With an all star panel, makes sense of what we know right now. But first, to kill Brantley, it a reporter with DailyMail.com on the story from the very beginning. Kill, what's the latest? Thanks for having me, Nancy. Things have just gone from bad to worse for Diddy. And now not only is he being accused of misconduct, but his son is being accused. Now his son, Christian King Combs, he's only 26 years old. And he was named in a lawsuit by a young 25 year old named Grace, who was working on a yacht in December 2022, when she says that Christian Combs uh, assaulted her, that he's tried groping her, that he trapped her in a room, and that it, was, it wasn't it was until another crew member came to stop it that she was finally released. She said that she was forced to take a tequila shot, and there's actual audio of that incident where she asks, is this drugged? And he says, take the tequila shot. Okay, wait, where did the video come from? So it's an audio that was a transcript of the audio was included in the 31 page lawsuit. Um, so apparently I'm not sure who exactly was recording, but there is a recording out there. Joining me very quickly. And I want to circle back to you, Kiawa, about uh, Sean Puffy Combs, AKA Diddy spinning, spinning, spinning. I mean, this guy is a master promoter. That's what he has done to become a media mogul with a net worth of around $1 billion. He spins. He spins it, right? And that's what he's doing right now. Every move he makes, in the public anyway, is for a reason. To Bernarda Villalona, uh, Bernarda Villalona, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor at VillalonaLaw.com. Bernarda, thank you for being with us. Uh, here's the reality. Sean Puffy Combs has been dragged into another lawsuit claiming sex attack um, on his son because it occurred on Diddy's, Sean Puffy Combs, yacht, okay? And the allegation is that Combs aided and abetted his son in this attack. But what I want to ask you about, Bernarda Villalona, is... The audio tape that Kayla Brantley's talking about. Can I see? Girl, Emma M, what happened to you? You had a seizure or something? Yep, her between 12 26. It's that motherfucking Christian. He be spiking them drinks too, girl. Look just like him, kissing ass, kissing his dad on his face. Nasty girl. You see how he was hugging his daddy that day, kissing on him? He did it on bus that butt wide open. Oh, God, mercy. I have to pray for you, girl, M&M. Mm-mm-mm. See, Bernarda, please. Bernarda, to get a video or an audio tape, even if it's a 911 call from the police, for Pete's sake, the prosecutor or whoever wants to bring it in has to go through a series of evidentiary hoops. In fact, it's laid out in black and white in the criminal code. You have to prove veracity. You've got to show who made the audio. Sometimes, why did they make the audio in uh, as the circumstances surrounding the audio being made? Um, you have to show chain of custody on the audio to make sure it hasn't been tampered with in any way. So 
when I say who made it, where did it come from, that's got to be proven in court before it can be allowed before a jury. Yes, absolutely. So, Nancy, what it seems like is that little Rod, who's one of the people that is also suing Puffy, was the one who actually Excuse made the me. recording. Excuse me, Bernarda. I, I don't know if you're expecting to go over to his house after the trial, but um, I believe you're referring to Rodney Jones, a.k.a. Little Rod. Yeah, so supposedly it was Little Rod. Ronnie Jones was the one who made this recording, which calls, calls into question is why he was making a recording and he knew what was going to happen. So he did it thinking that it was going to happen and he wanted evidence of it. Interestingly enough that the attorney that's representing Ronnie Jones is the same attorney that's representing this complaint and this victim in this alleged sexual assault. But this is very damning evidence because usually in cases like this, Nancy, What's the number one defense? Credibility, believability. She's making it up. This is a money grab. But here you have an actual audio recording that the complainant, the victim, is going to be able to authenticate and say, that is me on the recording. That is actually what happened. There is nothing missing from that recording. And we'll be able to meet the burden to have that piece of evidence move into evidence if it's in a civil lawsuit, in a civil case, or even in a criminal one. So that hurdle is going to be met. But this is very damaging against his son also damaging against Diddy because it can even possibly go in if the federal prosecutors are looking at a RICO charge, can go in as one of those acts. You're throwing around a lot of legal phrases when you say RICO. It's uh, typically referred to as racketeering, but what she means is an organized conspiracy. And it doesn't have to be that organized. It could be, for instance, um, Sean Puffy comes, gets his number one hench person to bring in a girl and somebody else uh, spikes a drink as a hypothetical. It's just basically a, a group, even if loosely joined together, joining together for a criminal enterprise such as sex trafficking. And, you know, Bernarda Villalona, I like what you said. You're a former prosecutor. And you look at the evidence, i.e., this audio tape. Hey, is this drugged? The woman says before she drinks it. And the audio says that comes as son says, just drink it. Drink it. Okay, long story short, that's a problem for the defense. So they are going to attack the alleged victim. They're going to drag her through the mud. But if they can get that audio in, that goes a long way to corroborating her story. I'm very curious from where that audio came. Now, this as it's spinning, spinning out. Kayla Brantley joining me, DailyMail.com. Um, the Instagram model, Jade Ramey, denies in Little Rod, Rodney Jones lawsuit that she was ever a sex worker. So the feds are not going to be able to count on her because she's already shot her credibility in the foot by going public and saying that. But I see a litmus test here. When you say, hey, you're lying on me, that's slander, that's libel. Are you going to sue? Because if you sue, the truth is a complete defense. So let's just see if a lawsuit comes out of this. But I want to talk about Cubs being a spin master a powerhouse in the music industry, largely because he is not only talented, but a genius at marketing. This promoter is putting out there his actions implying a lot. He's biking, he's smiling. Come to me, Liz. I want to show uh, the viewers something. This weekend, he was going over a bridge on a bike, and he let go of the handlebars and just went freestyle. Hey, look, Mom, no hands. Um, like in Titanic, when Kate Winslet just lets go, right? Like he doesn't have a care in the world. Biking, smiling, drinking wine. Uh, translation, I'm not worried. It's a spin, Kayla. 
Well, as, as you can see, these allegations go back decades, and he's gotten away with things thus far. So I feel like he's just acting as if he will continue to get out of things and get away from things. It's something that he's accustomed to living this glamorous lifestyle. And when he tells people to do things, they do it. When he tells people to cover things up, they do it. So for him, obviously, things have gotten much worse. He's ever had a huge raid on his house, a federal investigation. But for him, this is just another issue that he's hoping will be swept under the rug. To Scott Johnson joining me, forensic psychologist, 32 years dealing with sex predators at forensicconsultation.org. Scott, thank you for being with us. You know, I prosecuted a lot of rape cases, um, a trafficking case with a 14-year-old little victim. Um, I can't even count them all, Scott. And sometimes the defendant comes into court, he looks really worried, okay? Sweating, uh, fidgety, can't meet anybody's eyes, can't look them in the face. And there are others that are bold and arrogant because the sex attack victims mean nothing to them. They are so convinced of their own power, their wealth, their prestige. They believe nobody is going to believe the victim. Right, and part of that narcissism and psychopath traits of being able to portray themselves is socially great and then have the uh, equally opposite deviant side of getting away with things, covering it up, and just blowing it off with minimal uh, fear of consequences. And uh, that's really, I think, what we're seeing with him is portraying this I just really don't care lifestyle um, when, in fact, uh, uh, a normal person, if you will, would have been hiding, would have been scared, would have been, you know, worried about going to prison and the reputation. He's just out living his life again. He doesn't care. Well, as a matter of fact, an associate of Sean Puffy Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, has released a highlight reel of Sean Puffy Combs' lavish parties. This emerges with Combs partying with Hollywood friends, A-listers, and designer clothes. I want you to take a look at this. As rumors swirl around the sex trafficking allegations against Sean Diddy Combs, many celebrities in Combs' circle have remained silent. Others, especially those named in Rodney Jones' lawsuit, have rushed to the rapper's defense. Producer Stevie J posted a highlight reel of Combs' 50th birthday party to Instagram, showing off many A-list attendees. While the post purports to indicate what a real Diddy party looks like, it may also serve as a reminder to those pictured that they were on camera. Kobe Bryant, Dr. Dre, uh, Jay-Z, Mary Blige, Kim and Khloe Kardashian, Tyler Jenner, Post Malone, Naomi Campbell, Cardi B, Big Sean, Travis Scott, The Weeknd, Kanye, Jaden Smith, Snoop Dogg, Queen Latifah, Kevin Hart, Machine Gun Kelly. I, I, I can't even read them all. So I guess the point is all of these A-listers are partying with Combs. You think the feds care? Everybody parties with Puff. That's uh, Stevie J's visual reminder CBJ posting a video that Combs' biggest PR offensive to date is this video showing star after star after star partying with Sean Puffy Combs. Uh, back to you, Scott Johnson. You think the feds care? Oh, absolutely not, because this is just him portraying this socially normal, respected kind of individual soiree when, in fact, the dark side's still going on. And so regardless of who he's with, it doesn't take away at all the credibility of any of the alleged victims or the charges against him. To you, Bernardo Villalona, though, what about a jury? What about the association between Combs and these superstars like Mary Blige, like uh, The Weeknd, like the Kardashians and the Jenners? That could actually affect a juror. 
Absolutely, because you got to think juries are normal people. They may be phased by all of these stars, and it may affect their judgment. But I think the feds do care, Nancy, and this is how. The feds may want to question, may want to subpoena these A-listers to see whether they have any knowledge of what happened at these parties, whether they have anything that can move the ball or any interest, or have they seen or heard anything criminal-wise. So they do care in that sense. I wouldn't be surprised if any of them get subpoenas. Including Golden Boy Ashton Kushner, who apparently is preparing to be subpoenaed. Uh, of course, he's not saying that, but sources are saying that. Is that real? What they better be worried about instead of posting birthday videos with stars is what we have been told. Video and audio recordings depicting sex acts by Diddy and others on victims, be they willing or unwilling, remains to be seen. Listen. The Rodney Lil Rod Jones lawsuit alleges there's evidence of the sexual assaults and sex trafficking as hidden cameras record everything throughout the Combs homes, which is why homes in L.A. and Miami were raided. Combs former bodyguard Gene Deal commented that if there are cameras in Combs homes, there may be compromising video of politicians and princes. The claims are reminiscent of the cameras Jeffrey Epstein allegedly used as an insurance policy against powerful friends like Prince Andrew and Bill Clinton. Golden joining us, former senior inspector with the U.S. Marshals Service, now with Golden Consulting and Investigations. Barry, thank you for being with us. Keeping nice videos? Seriously? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he intended to keep the videos or just never erase them, but apparently during the raids on his two domiciles, videos were seized. I mean, if that's true, what an idiot to keep yes. videos i mean help me barry golden that's what people do people keep videos to look back on you know later in time and and you know that's why i think okay that can you just stop right there barry yeah. golden barry golden please stop once in a while i look at videos of my children I guess I have, I have a daughter real. Are you, the way you said that, you made it sound so innocent. Yeah, people look back on video. What? These are willing victims. That means rape. Rape. That's what we're talking about. What do you mean to reminisce? Well, I'm not reminisce. Just people have, have, they keep the videos. And, you know, one thing I, that I look at is, and some of the, the audio recordings that you have and the video recordings, especially that audio recording on that yacht, one thing you look at is somebody has to authenticate that audio recording. It's an audio recording. So if the allegation is that Rodney Evans is the one that audio recording, that needs to be date and time stamped somehow, just so you don't have some audio that happened, you know, you don't know need to be date and time stamped. It's probably taken by his cell phone, which means Rodney F. is probably a you know, witness to some of the partial alleged, you know, sex acts that might have happened. If Nancy the Grace got some tapes, baby, these motherfuckers do. They do. If Nancy the Grace got any kind of tapes, these motherfuckers do. Just heard what she said. What he said. If he recorded that, maybe not all of them, but part of them. So, um, but all these videos are going to need to be date and time stamps and then have an accurate time when they have You know what? i got bigger problems than the date and time stamp, Barry Gold. Of course you're right. But, yes, of course you're right, evidentiarily. You're right, and that's got to be done by the fans if they're going to bring... <laughs> hey, Moss, it'd be so funny when you put their friends you stand for pride on her. <laughs> type of evidence into uh, trial, but I, I got a bigger question. Scott Johnson, uh, I need a shrink, and you're a forensic psychologist. What kind of perv keeps videos 
an unwilling hey angie allegedly unwilling sex acts with victims for the fans to race in in their armored vehicle and seize yes and out of narcissism they keep these videos so they can replay them enjoy them get off on the power that they they uh is demonstrated in the video but also as a source of of blackmail for those involved to keep them quiet so two okay two, wait. Yep. so to you're keep saying them quiet, yep. on the victim to keep the victim quiet yep, and yep. all of these are allegations nobody's been tried nobody's been found guilty in fact sean puffy diddy p diddy come says he's innocent so wait <laughs> let me understand this the alleged rapist you're saying would use the videos to blackmail the alleged victim Should, isn't that bass back bass backwards shouldn't well, yeah, she but, the victim be using it against him well it's one way to not only keep the victim quiet but also others that were participating from possibly testifying against what was allowed to happen so from that standpoint it's a power piece in the chess game for the offender as well as going back and reminiscing about it because likely why do you keep saying that you and barry golden reminiscing like hey you remember that time we got in the rv and crossed the country together that's reminiscing Yes. What you said earlier, I think, would be what's happening, where you, and I, I'm just a JD, okay, you're the shrink, hey. but you look back on the rape, and you get sexual excitement out of that. Exactly. I mean, I'm queuing yeah, with do. myself here, but this yeah. whole reminiscing thing, what a, it's not some grandma on the front porch with a rocking chair going through the photo album. Correct, but he is getting off and aroused to what's going on because that turns him on. And so what Barry was saying, and I'm saying is that for the offender, this is a, a, a momentum for them uh -huh. as well to re enjoy what happened as well as for blackmail purposes. To Brett Brown, joining me, executive director of SAS, that's Surviving Assault Standing Strong. Ooh. It's a nonprofit on a mission to eradicate abuse and trafficking brett brown i mean really these women and one man i like to add that we know of so far are alleging that they were forced or coerced into sex and now there are videos we are learning just to add insult to injury some of these episodes were videotaped and some idiot kept the videos. Yes, I see a pattern here that's a lot among editors and it is one of ownership. Sean Combs sets out to own his victims and he does it in a variety of ways, but usually beginning with gifts that are Trojan horse gifts. So if you're looking to get on a label, if you want a nice place to live, if you're looking to kind of, you know, record a record any of these things it's people's dreams and then he takes them and he twists them into a nightmare and he maintains this ownership over people through threats and intimidation and it's been clear this is a man who makes good on his promises he follows through on those threats and so how many times has he been brought to justice so when you look at the victims over the years they're trying to figure out what survival looks like how do they stay alive and keep going without having to relive this over and over again Again. For some of them, it is silence, and for others now, they are finally speaking out, even though they may be videoed. The U.S. Attorney's Office, Southern District of New York, previously stated that four Jane Doe's and one John Doe had been interviewed as part of the Sean Combs sex trafficking investigation. We're now learning Combs's ex, Cassandra Ventura, has been working with the feds for weeks, possibly even before the raids. Ventura may have expanded on the claims made in her November 2023 lawsuit to provide investigators with the probable cause necessary to execute search warrants in the mobile's homes. Okay, that is Cassie Ventura, who's famous in her own right. But there are four Jane Doe's and one John Doe who has been, they have been interviewed by the feds. Listen. I had sex with Cassie and Sean. 
basically when the human thought I wanted to do with Cassie, I had like 15 encounters and I heard lots of business of what they would do. It's Sean talks a lot on the on the phone and on the TV with speaking and stuff, and I'll be in the I was like a set slave. Girl, that was some motherfucking white man, baby, telling it. Let's rhyme that. Oh, my God. Okay. Whoa, whoa. One John Doe, who has been, they have been interviewed by the feds. Listen. I had sex with Kathy and Sean. Basically, when the people don't want to do the casting, I had like 15 encounters, and I heard lots of business. Because when they would do it, it's Sean. Talks about the on the phone and on the TV with people and stuff, and I'll be in the house like a sis. That's the next motherfucker for you. Check this out, y'all. Uh, they say, Jane Deal said that Puffy Shelf hated. Because whenever he she would bring him, he would be sitting in the chair naked. Who telling your stupid ass to continue to work for this motherfucker? What kind of shit is that, y'all? If you don't want to see him naked and you working for him, why don't you find a new job? These people are acting like a motherfucker making them stay there. I understand the blackmail tapes and that part right there. For far as some people right there didn't want their business to get out because they was fucking a man and he was making them fuck them and they didn't know they was being recorded. But in order for a song to come out, like the lady was just saying, they be so happy to get a record deal, to get played on the radio, to be in the spotlight and not knowing they being recorded. And hey, shit, you ain't finna get no money. When he put the record out, all the money gonna go to him because he got a tape showing you doing this and that and you embarrassed because you don't got fucked in the ass. Girl, but why would you set if you don't want to see him naked, sitting in a chair, whenever he bring you, when you bring him his lunch, dinner, breakfast, or what fucking ever, what the fuck you still working up for, girl? Stupid motherfuckers for you. These motherfuckers, and like he had a, a AK forty seven to that to to they head or something. Cause this is the craziest shit I ever heard. I may have expanded on the claims made in her November. 2023 lawsuit to provide investigators with the probable cause necessary to execute search warrants in the moguls' homes. Okay, that is Cassie Ventura, who's famous in her own right. But there are four Jane Doe's and one John Doe who has been, they have been interviewed by the feds. Listen. I had sex with Cassie John. Basically, when the human went to Cassie, I had like 15 encounters and I heard lots of business. Because what they would do is Sean talks a lot on the, on the phone and on the TV with people and stuff, and I'll be in the house like a sex slave. Okay, whoa, 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 wait, okay. It's hard to make out what he's saying, but I, I have transcribed it. I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would and tell me what to do with Cassie. I had like 15 encounters, and I heard a lot about business because they would do it. What they would do is Sean talks a lot on the phone and on the TV with speakers and stuff, and I, being, I was like, a sex slave. There you are. That is Cassie Ventura on multiple of her album covers. Beautiful. So let me understand. To Kayla Brantley, there are right now we know of four Jay Doe's that have been interviewed and one John Doe, who I am guessing is this guy, Jonathan Odie. Yeah, Nancy. So as you heard that there's these John Doe's and these Jane Doe's who are being interviewed who obviously were paid a lot of money to keep quiet. Now, that clearly hasn't worked out for Diddy. And this is somebody who has a lot of power, like you said, a lot of influence, like you said. And going back to the latest lawsuit filed by the woman on the yacht who alleges Diddy's son 
uh, groped her. She also named Diddy for aiding and abetting. Now, she alleges that she did file a proper complaint, but that things just kind of got swept under the rug, and she alleges that Diddy paid off the captain to turn a blind eye. So if we're talking about his power, his influence, he's used to paying off anyone he can to get things to quietly go away. Yeah, I want to go back out to Brett Brown, Executive Director of Surviving Assault, standing strong, we've seen a lot of rapists get away slip through the cracks uh, for various reasons. I wonder how long SPC Sean Puffy Combs has managed to do that, if at all. It seems as though this has been going on for decades. And so when we're looking at the victims in these cases, they are having to make really difficult decisions while at the same time, they are reliving their experience over and over again as more video and more. And more people speak. And so it's a long and arduous process with no guarantee end so far. Scott Johnson, you were weighing in earlier about the potential sex recordings. Yes. Yes. And so again, back to, you know, using for in their mind, reliving what for them was a positive experience. Just and say it for Pete's sake, Scott Johnson. <laughs> exactly. That's what they're doing. It's a turn on for them but also a potential blackmail piece to keep people quiet. And as has already been said, he gets away with things because people can cover up. He, he's not worried about it. He's not hiding. He's actually sitting back, probably reveling in the fact that all of this is going on. and He's expecting everything to go away and will continue to attack the credibility of any victim. Well, hey, there's a record. It happened on the way to Kayla Brantley. Remember the claims that were made not too long ago and there was the hush-hush, most likely multi-million dollar payout to get rid of them? Yep. Um, after Cassie Ventura filed her lawsuit the next day, they settled it out of court for an undisclosed amount. And I think what's happening here is, is that duty risk of having these videos was worth it to have blackmail on these high powered people that he had these videos on. And in an Epstein esque fashion, you know, it worked out. Maybe we would have had lawsuits, maybe we would have had raids and federal investigations years ago if he didn't have these videos uh, for potential blackmail on these high powered people. Well, it goes beyond that, guys. This is incredible to me. But in the last hours, the alleged victims lawyer has been attacked and claimed that the victims were out to quote embarrass SBC, John Puffy Combs, completely ignoring the hell that sex trafficking victims go through. Oh no, yeah, that didn't happen. Don't look there. Look over here. Diddy's embarrassed. Listen. Tyrone Blackburn, the representing both Robbie Jones and Grace Omar K, the latest to Sue Combs, is accused of improperly filing several lawsuits to, quote, garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly. Judge needs to refer Blackburn to the New York Grievance Committee, which has the power to disbar Blackburn. John and Justin Combs lawyer Aaron Dyer say the latest filing by Blackburn is both dealt with the same kind of manufactured lies and irrelevant facts we've come to expect from Blackburn. We will be filing a motion to dismiss this outrageous claim. Okay, let's analyze what we just heard. Okay, let me understand something. Kayla Brantley joining me. Everybody on the panel, again, we're not having high tea at Windsor Castle. If Charles and Camilla look around, do you see them? No, you don't. Jump in, for Pete's sake, if you have a thought. Kayla Brantley, let me understand this. I, I was used to it as a prosecutor. Every big trial I had, I would get a claim that I needed to be thrown off the case. Why? It, it varied. 
and the judge needed to be thrown off the case, and the investigator needed to be thrown off the case. Everybody needs to get thrown off the case, right? Okay. We see it happen in a lot of high-profile cases. And here's the debate. Claims being made on the alleged victim's lawyer that he's the bad guy. And now there's actually going to be, what, a mini hearing on it? I mean, this is so fast backwards. The alleged victim's lawyer is giving a complaint on him. You know what? I might give it a shred of analysis, but the, the, the fact that the feds just searched SPC's homes armed with assault weapons, that kind of corroborates what the victim's lawyer is saying. Oh, there's a new video. Ouch. I do not want to look out my kitchen window and see. See this. Oh, hey, did you see that drone? They use drones to proceed there to make sure nobody's hiding around a corner with an. So, what about this kill, Grant? We're under attack? I mean, clearly it just looks like it's a distraction. They're trying to attack the lawyer's credibility, trying to go after anything they can to prolong what will eventually likely be a trial, that they're going to throw anything that they can to really distract everyone, to just deny, deny, deny for credibility and hope that something sticks and gets him off on the technicality. Now this, is very common, uh, this is very common, a psychopath to use projection and put everything off on everyone else and gaslighting, you know, look at how the victims really not credible. They're trying you know, everything, everyone. That's what they're good at is blaming to defer looking at their own client. Yes, yes, and yes. Bernard Villalona, and uh, I want to hear from you and from Brett Brown from SAS. Bernard, I mean, any good prosecutor. These motherfuckers try to steal evidence at the attorney motherfucking, at the Little Rock motherfucking attorney office, house, wherever the fuck they went. These people are evil. They're trying to get this evidence so they can't have this shit in court. Has been threatened with getting thrown off the case, taken off the case, prosecutorial misconduct, blah, 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 blah. I mean, if you've tried cases, they're going to come after you because they're between a rock and a hard spot and they'll do anything. They'll even say their own lawyer who sweat blood, sweat and tears for them. They'll say he, he, she is ineffective because there's nowhere else to go. So I'm not surprised at all that victims' lawyers are being attacked. I'm not surprised at the victim's lawyer being attacked. However, Nancy, let's be clear. In this case, who gave Diddy and his attorneys the attack is a federal district court judge. This is Judge Denise Colt, who plainly said that she has great concern and pause in this attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, because he has filed in at least five different federal cases, some cases that have insufficiencies, and that supposedly she said that Blackburn has a history of bringing these cases for social publicity to get a money grab. So that's why a federal district court judge, we're talking about a judge here, is the one who made the complaint to the bar committee, to the bar association. So in terms of normally you hear about attorneys being attacked, judges being attacked. But when you oh have my a God. judge saying this about an attorney, I think we have to look at it even more clearly okay. and give it some more weight. Okay. And remember, this is okay. also the same district court judge in the same district where these lawsuits have been filed. I want to be clear that the... I heard on somebody, I heard on somebody else's channel that that attorney was poor before, he used to have no money, and that he was crying on the show before. <clears throat> they need to call somebody else. Because obviously he's not a good attorney. This is the second time I heard somebody say something bad about that attorney. Which is filed against the alleged victim's lawyer, Lawyer Blackburn, was about an entirely separate 
case. It's just bubbled back up into the media consciousness because that lawyer, Blackburn, is also representing some of Diddy's alleged victims. Now, Judge Coe's ruling happened uh, as it relates to a case about a year ago, a legal malpractice lawsuit that Blackburn filed last year. And he was referred to a grievance committee then for the Southern District of New York. But now, everybody's talking about it because he's also representing SPC's alleged victims. Yes, Tyrone Blackburn, who has huge credibility issues in that Southern District, in that Federal District Courthouse, where he's now found these two lawsuits having to deal with Don Puffy Combs, it's a big issue. If he's really looking to deal with the best interests of his clients, of the victims, of the complainants, he should step aside and allow somebody else to represent them because he has huge credibility issues. And when we're talking about the Southern District, yes, yeah, she's right. He should step aside if you know what he's doing. I promise y'all, it was on somebody's blog channel. <coughs> they were saying that he's not a good attorney, that he didn't used to have no money, he was begging, crying, <clears throat> all that. I was like, damn, who would go hire an attorney like that? Or maybe they didn't know he was um had a history like that. They didn't know his background. Courthouse. Attorneys talk judges talk and his credibility is on the line you're talking about this judges being attacked but when you have a judge saying this about an attorney i think we have to look at it even more clearly and give it some more weight and remember this is also the same district court judge in the same district where these lawsuits have been filed i want to be clear that the order the judges filed against the alleged victim's lawyer, Lawyer Blackburn, was about an entirely separate case. It's just bubbled back up into the media consciousness because that lawyer, Blackburn, is also representing some of Diddy's alleged victims. Now, Judge Coates' ruling happened uh, as it relates to a case about a year ago a legal malpractice lawsuit that Blackburn filed last year. And he was referred to a grievance committee then for the Southern District of New York. But now, Bernarda, everybody's talking about it because he's also representing SPC's alleged victims. Yes, Tyrone Blackburn, who has huge credibility issues in that Southern District, in that Federal District Courthouse, where he's now filed these two lawsuits having to deal with Sean Puffy Combs, it's a big issue. If he's really looking to do what's in the best interest of his clients, of the victims, of the complainants, he should step aside and allow somebody else to represent them because he has huge credibility issues. And when we're talking about the Southern District in that courthouse, attorneys talk judges talk and his credibility is on the line you're talking about this order that's been placed a year before anything came out having to deal with puffy and here we have him at the center stage with these two lawsuits having to deal with sean puffy Combs. so in terms of okay, his credibility you know what, Bernardo, shot, the Alana. Uh, you can find Bernarda at theolonalaw.com. Bernarda, I don't know that I agree with everything that you said, but I can tell you this much. If these cases go in front of a jury, you think the jury's going to hear from Attorney Blackburn? No, they're not. It's the alleged victim's credibility. Exactly. They want to hear the victims. Nancy, she right about that. She right about that. They want to hear everything somebody else got to say, then they make their decision. She right about that. I'm glad she stopped her right there that matters not the lawyers if the victims are telling the truth bam the jury's not going to hear about a grievance filed in another case against the lawyer but yes we can go round and round about that all day but i want you to look at something else in the last days new video has emerged new footage of the searches of Combs's home, and we're learning a lot. Look, you're seeing armed 
Home security investigator, Homeland Security investigators searching with drones, with weapons pulled, automatic weapons inside Combs' home. Barry Golden, formerly with the U.S. Marshal Service, what about it? Let's see the video, Liz. They did exactly what they're supposed to. That is standard operating procedure. You go in heavy. You go in armed with body armor ready. They brought in the armored vehicles just in case. Girl, it's a lot of no motherfuckers in that house. Ooh, it's a lot. Ooh, it's a lot, girl. This a lot. And they look like the tunnel part of it. It look like the tunnel. So you don't want to pull up in front of a residence and all of a sudden somebody walks out and starts shooting at you. So law enforcement is taking a safety approach. They go in heavy, command and control. There have been allegations of excessive force. I didn't see an excessive force there. The sons were brought out. They were they were searched. They were Their hands were put behind their head. Okay? You even saw the agents just put their hands on one of the sons' um, head and walk them backwards and then... Yes, they were handcuffed outside just so everybody is safe. Nobody does any stupid movements. Nobody reaches for anything. That is standard operating procedure for law enforcement. I've done that so many times. I can't even tell you how many times that is done by the FBI, HSI, ATF, U.S. Marshals, and DEA. That's what they do. I didn't see any um, allegation of excessive force. They did it uh, by the book. Okay, and yes, they use drones because when you have allegations of guns in there, let's put somebody that a non-human in there to give us eyes on the inside of that property. Now we know what we're going into, okay, and it's clear and it's safe. And now law enforcement moves in there, commands and control, control that home, and now you can search the entire house without any problems with anybody. Yeah, the last thing I want is another agent shot dead just affecting a search Liz one last time can I look at that uh, the video has just been released apparently released by Combs's ex to show quote excessive force and militaristic efforts used by the Homeland Security investigators but it's apparently had the exact opposite effect since the raids on Sean Combs' L.A. and Miami homes, rapper 50 Cent has continuously ridiculed Combs on social media. The artists have been clashing for nearly 20 years, beginning with 50 Cent's belief Combs knows who killed Notorious B.I.G. Between various rap artists is an ongoing feud erupting in violence. As a matter of fact, Kayla Brantley joining us from DailyMail.com. Suge Knight warning Combs his, quote, life is in danger during a prison call. Apparently, Suge Knight, via the prison phone, actually does a podcast from behind bars. And in that, warns Sean Puffy Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, his life is in danger. What's that about? Well, Suge Knight is behind bars, and he was targeted and eventually did end up in prison so this is just a warning to diddy that they will get you if they want to get you as they did him and he's tying all these different cases to him they're tying the tupac case to him because he does have a history of guns of drugs of beef with these other artists so it's all culminating now in these cases and these raids and it's just a warning that he can end up behind bars and his life is in danger the Death Row Records founder states, quote, I tell you what, Puffy, your life is in danger because you know the secrets. Who's involved in that little secret room you guys are participating in? That was from Collect Call podcast that he actually records over the phone from behind prison bars. Guys, let's stop and remember American hero, firefighter Adam Finseth. Just 40.
Hi, Erica. We almost finished, y'all. In the last interview we did, you said that Diddy, he was an informant, and that went viral. And, you know, we got a good reaction for that. But you had some people that, you know, they was wondering, how do you know that Diddy was an informant? And they wanted you to go more into detail about it. Can you do that? Well, see, if I'm in the car with Kirk Burns and him and our driver, and we go down to 26 Federal Plaza. I know 26 Federal Plaza is the FBI office. All right? Now, what they went down there and what paperwork they took down there, I did not know until I found out later that he was working with an agent in D.C. But he was arrested by an agent in New York. But I can't go into it. And the reason I can't go into it is because another individual found out this information and it's owed to him. But when Fox News and everybody say they can't find out who the agent is, that's bullshit. It's online. If you got certain systems that you can find out who the agent is, because we found out who the agent is, but it's not my story to tell. I would tell you that, brother, but it's not my story to tell. It belongs to somebody else, and they're going to see it come out. Puff was hit with a 40 rule because it's called a rule 40, because he didn't show up at the agent's office in D.C., the New York agent arrested him. He got uh, uh, um, adjudicated of all charges in January of 1999. Was it 99? I think it was 99 when he got 99 or 96. Was it, 96? it was January of 96 or 99. I wish I could tell you more about it, stuff like that, but I don't have the paperwork in front of me. But when they tell you they can't find out the agent, he's he's, he's a director now here in New York. It's true. He was hit with a rule 40 for not showing up to the agent in D.C. And the agent in New York arrested him and charged him. And they end up throwing it out and sealing the case. That's when, and that's how I figured that he was working with the FBI. And around this time, when you found out that Diddy, he was an informant, he said that, you know, Diddy, he told the feds that Shug Knight, Irv Gotti, and Jay Prince was trying to make a company together? Well, what happened was is this, is that Shug Knight was trying to meet up with Dame Dash, Irv Gotti, Jay Prince, uh... Eric B. No. They was trying to get a distribution company. You know what I'm saying? Distribute, publish their own music. They, they was trying to bring their money together and do that. And what I know of is that and Jay-Z was a part of this because I, I heard Jim probably spoke on this too, that Jay-Z and Puff had had somebody write something up to say that they was trying to uh, monopolize, uh, to, you know, get a monopoly on the industry and start their own dis distribution company. And they told the higher ups. And they that's when all those companies start going down, start coming up with federal charges and all kinds of, you know, things that's happened to them. You've seen it with Irv Gotti them. Seen it with uh, Rockefeller breaking up and all that shit like that. That's what I was talking about. You still winning big at Trump Casino? Absolutely. Have you signed up yet? Is it?